along in this journey who really put in the work to understand this value proposition, to understand how it works, uh, they're the ones that are thinking about it more tactically and using this as an opportunity to perhaps uh, take a position or add to a position. Um, so they're not the ones that are looking to, to trade on news or sentiment or, or price action, um, but to really build that core position. And of course, uh, now is a lot more appealing than a few months ago. What do you think, Austin? I, I think a recession, I mean, the most common cause of recessions is the Fed raises interest rates faster than the economy can handle. Where that would happen in the sectors, you already see that a little in this, in this GDP, business investment, housing, consumer durables, the stuff that's interest rate sensitive, that's the stuff that's going to suffer. And the, if, we haven't said anything about the dollar. With the dollar as strong as it's been, uh, you, you're likely to see even more hit on, on manufacturing in, in the U.S. because we're going to be facing import competition that's cheaper. So. By no means are we out of the woods. It's a nice observation that the PCE deflator was less, you know, maybe, maybe we've peaked in that. And that's the main thing that the, that the Fed looks at. It's a little bit of a better measure of, of inflation than, it, than is the CPI. And we, it's a decently strong growth, but our overall point is still pretty bumpy. So, so I think people should buckle their seatbelts on this one formal definition or technical definition of a recession is six straight months of negative growth. We, we've already had that this year, but today's positive GDP data mean we've avoided an economic slowdown, or is this just a brief blip before things might take a turn again? I think we don't really know. The truth is it may very well be a blip. This has been a, a bit of a technical issue in terms of is it a recession, is it not a recession, semantics, given in large part we have this unemployment picture that just looks so different than what we've had normally, which is if you were going to have so many quarters of, 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 of negative growth at the same time, you would have also had higher unemployment. So I think still hard to say, but I do think, having just been on the phone with CEOs all day today, uh, that the idea that there's going to be higher unemployment in the future is almost guaranteed. Is that, Andrew, because executives are trying to be more cautious about what could come or are they telling they already feel that slowdown afoot? Well, I think you're seeing it already in many respects. The advertising piece we saw with Meta just yesterday, um, what you saw with Apple today, to some degree what you saw with Amazon today as well in terms of those earnings, I think it's starting to pinch. I think people are starting to see the early signs of that and are hoping to get ahead of it. And so when I, when I say that there's a likelihood that we're going to see unemployment move higher, which oddly enough is what the Federal Reserve has wanted all along in terms of trying to help bring down some of that inflation and the wage inflation issue, I think that you're going to start to see that in the next couple months. And Fed officials, of course, meet next week. Does this strong GDP print mean that they're going to keep their foot on the gas and keep raising interest rates? I think every Fed watcher that we've been talking to suggests that the foot is uh, staying uh, right there on the gas. I don't think this changes anything. If anything, it may give them a little bit more leeway to feel that they can. Of course, it's not really what happens next week. It's what happens later in the year and then, of course, what happens in 23. And if you really look at how the market's already starting to think about that, I think there's an expectation that they may overshoot and then, then they may have to let up on the gas. We'll see. Okay, Welcome to the crypto teacher. teacher. And you know I come back with that video just to make you think. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And guys, we know the big corporations and big banks are going to buy up crypto during this bear market. We already see them coming and implementing their plan. And we see more and more exchanges and more and more of these private companies Working on the NWO's agenda, stable coins, CBDCs. And then, guys, now we have the talk of recession. Now we have the talk of layoffs. Yes, the GDP numbers came in good today. But, guys, we know November, December, we know how they do it. They're going to revise them down. The same thing they do with unemployment numbers, which those numbers make no sense whatsoever. If you're not getting unemployment benefits, you drop out the system so you're not even counted. And we have all the CEOs from the big corporations stating that they're going to be cutting back or laying off. Guys, these corporations, 
are worth hundreds of billions, trillions of dollars, but they can get away with it. Why? Because they have the louder voice. They control all your media, what you see and what you hear. Nobody's actually looking at the numbers. Numbers don't lie unless you're manipulating them. And that's the reason why they don't teach finances in school. Because if you understood the system, it wouldn't work. And we see Credit Suisse right now in trouble. But we know the NWO are the magicians. And the banks are the biggest what? I'm going to let you finish that. Y'all have a wonderful day. Back to Squawk Box. Credit Suisse shares plunging after the bank posted a huge third quarter loss, announcing a major strategic overhaul. Number one, you know, a radical restructuring of the investment bank. Number two, a significant reduction of costs. And number three, and further strengthening of our capital base. And I think with that, we have all the necessary ingredients, so to say, together to go where we want to go. Arguably, I would think at least one of the strongest growth regions over the next 10 years. We are in the region with our businesses like more than 60 years. And, uh, you know, we, feel, we felt very much supported by, you know, this new shelter coming in and, you know, believing and supporting our transformation going. We're going to a different economy and we're going to be learning more about that uh, as we go. But clearly, we're, we're, we're learning that things can be done uh, from remote, remote locations. We're learning that technology can replace people even more than we thought. We're not going back to the same economy. We're, going, we're recovering, but to a different economy. And it'll be one that is more leveraged to technology. And I worry that that is going to make it even more difficult than it was for, for many workers. In Silicon Valley and my friends who work in technology know that what we did to the manufacturing workers, we are now going to do to the retail workers, the call center workers, the fast food workers, the truck drivers, and then even bookkeepers, accountants, uh, insurance agents, lawyers, and on and on through the economy. So what happened to the manufacturing workers is a very clear sign. This effort, and China has big plans for this. They intend to seed um, their digital yuan into the global environment by giving it away to visitors at next winter's Olympics. When they arrive at the airport, they're going to get di yuan digital wallets. They're going to receive digital yuan. They're going to use it uh, throughout their visits to Beijing, and then they're going to take it back to their own countries. They see this as a huge advantage. Why? Because who controls the underlying protocols, who un controls the underlying standards of the future of money will control the future of money. The most powerful person in the world is the storyteller. The storyteller sets the vision, values, and agenda of an entire generation to come. Steve Jobs. And guys, you know I truly believe in this. When you look at the New World Order, they're the storytellers. And that's the reason why I wrote my New World Order book. But guys, now it's time to change the current generation. And I wrote three kids' books. You know I love the Trinity because I understand the power that's in it. So I have three books. We have an opportunity to change the generation, to educate, not just me, but I want to show you that I take action on a daily basis. And I want you to take action on a daily basis. Whether it's your job, whether it's in your community, we have an opportunity right now to educate the masses. I posted this on my Twitter account. Please share, but this is a short clip of the three books. There's going to be a clothing line and action figure. Please get these books for your kids, nephews, cousins, friends. So therefore, we can start the re-education now. Because as we see, the fourth industrial revolution foundation is definitely here. Robots, algorithms, drones, taking humanity out the picture. We have to re-educate. But let's get into the video. Part 1. King Yahshua and Grandma Tim. Save the village. Part 2. King Yahshua and Grandma Tim. Save New York. Long COVID-33. Part 3. King Yahshua and Grandma Tim. Goes to China. It's mandatory to get Part 1, Part 2, and Part 3 of this series.
It's time to re-educate Generation Z.